all right what's up everybody how you guys doing we're getting the patch notes review once again i think we missed the last one I'm not sure if we missed the one before that but we're here we got a new god i hear he's kind of broken i didn't get to see him in action but i've heard rumors about what he does his name's chernabog lord of darkness looks pretty cool um this is this is a slavic pantheon first god of the slavic pantheon uh, passive heart of gold, every successful basic attack impales the enemy with a brittle crystal. At first, I got <laughs> nervous. Impales the enemy. I thought he had it on her impale, um, on basics. Uh, upon reaching three stacks of heart of gold, the enemy explodes for extra damage in an area around them. Okay, so he stacks Cupid Heart Bomb, basically, with every three, um, auto attacks. This is kind of crazy. For that dude, 15 plus 1% of your level. I mean, of your, yeah, 1% of your level. Okay, it's 15% of your basic power plus 1% of your level. So it goes up to 35% total. Yeah, wow. Crystallized Curses. Um, am I pronouncing this correctly? Chernabog? I Probably not. It might be Chernabog. Conjures a large crystal of curses and hurls it at the target location. He's all about death and curses and dealing damage on landing. Um, after several seconds, the crystalline curse explode, damaging again and rooting the enemy in the area. The crystal can be detonated early by firing at the vicious with vicious barrage. All right, vicious barrage active. Chernobog um, fires an enlarged or Chernobog fires an enlarged. Wait, he fires another large. He's all about just shooting crystals. This guy, that's what he does. All right, he's a crystal death god, can pierce enemies and deals damage like a basic attack. This applies to single stack. This is all tough to decipher and probably needs to be seen in person. That's the thing about the, the god stuff. I think the hardest thing about doing a patch notes analysis with, you know, reading you guys beat by beat with a new god is you really got to see him in action to see, you know, how all of this plays out. Um, so I'm going to let you guys see those more than anything. The most important thing to know is that this guy's got a global ult. Um, he summons shadows at the location of all enemies that apply a stacking slow f and last for 8 seconds. I didn't know that it gives a slow to all enemies. Chernabog, uh, or Chernabog can select any of his shadow clones to fly towards. Once he reaches the location, he takes the place of his shadow, refreshing his cooldowns as well as temporarily obtaining damage mitigations, extra movement speed, and every attack triggers cold Heart of Gold. That... It sounds like they just tried to make that sound as bloated as possible, you know? Like, it gives him literally everything you can imagine. Even his passive is procced on every auto instead of every three autos, which is kind of nuts. Um, just wow. But, yeah, it is a 110 second cooldown at all ranks, which I think makes it the longest uh, cooldown ult in the game. It, it sounds absolutely ridiculous. The slow on every enemy sounds pretty crazy to me. Um, and the fact that he can travel to enemies who aren't already revealed, uh, like a Shibanke ult, but he can travel to them. It just sounds nuts, and most people are really scared of it. Uh, I think justly. Some people say, no, that may be, it's just an overreaction. And, you know, it, it's going to be one of the two. That's that's what it's going to be, all right? <laughs> Either this is going to be ridiculously broken, or somehow his the rest of his kit will be shitty enough that he won't be broken with that. I, I mean, I feel like it's going to go the way of the broken side, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, like I said, I didn't review the other uh, abilities as much or at all, so, you know, maybe they suck. They've been doing a lot of these uh, little chibi or um, uh, even the plushy skins with that RDO, and now they got chibi Fenrir. He looks mad cute. This is a really good art card. Um, I think Enna probably made this, uh, the artist at high res. She makes such good uh, smite art. It's really fantastic. E United Kakolin looks great. I hate this god so much, and I'm mad they chose him because I like United, but I hate Kakulin. They gave an actual fat Loki skin to Kabrakin, which is funny, and most people seem to really like it. Um, at first, I was really skeptical. I was like, it seems like they took the joke way too far, but I don't know. Most people seem to really like it, and I don't like what Kakulin looks like, in, or I'm sorry, Kabrakin looks like in general. So a whole like change to his look here is pretty nice honestly <laughs> it looks kind of cool and uh, i'm down it, it's a cute concept or you know cute concept that they didn't invent but they built upon now what i don't understand is this northern ranger hachiman it's literally uler it's a it's a hachiman uler skin or an uler hachiman skin 
however you want to say it. It's strange, and I don't understand why they, they chose to do this. But at the same time, Hachiman, I didn't like any of his skins. And this, it looks really cool. But it's like, he, he literally just looks like Uller. I gotta see what the effects are on it. Um, but, I mean, it's cool. If I'm playing Hachi, I'll certainly be playing this skin. As long as I, you know, get this skin for free somehow. Cool skin, regardless. Divine Uprising. Kickoff for Divine Uprising event where we unveil our upcoming plans for these three new Pantheons. Oh, three new. I thought you were talking about Slavic. Um, yeah, yeah, I definitely forgot. <laughs> Slavic and the other one. Slavic and, uh, ooh, I know it's going to be the first Black Pantheon, but I don't remember at all now voodoo yep voodoo so slavic and voodoo uh, i don't know what the other one is cool though so that's going to be an uh, event centering around these new pantheons new free gods blah 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 new cosmetics get on to the item balance evolve warrior's blessing at the start of season five warrior's blessing season pal comparison um so they actually oh, okay i was about to say i, I thought they were going to buff it oh look at this that shouldn't be. But anyway, I thought they were going to buff it again. This item it has become really bloated because, like they said, in the beginning of the season, it didn't look that strong. So they buffed it up a little too much. Um, but now they're bringing it back down to balance by decreasing the protections of the evolved item from 15 to 10. That's nice. So they're bringing it back to what it was. Uh, Soul Reaver. Increased cost from uh, 2650 to 2750 Okay. I guess it was, uh, do, you know, overperforming a little bit in Conquest. In Duel, I think it's still not that relevant, really. We haven't seen much of it at all. I haven't seen any of it. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it won't change too much. Duel, the, you know, gold for these bigger items in general, especially. Unless, if, if you're talking something like Ickful, like small early game items, gold has a big effect. But uh, for the, the bigger, you know, finisher items like Soul Reaver, this isn't going to affect Duel too much. So if Silver Reaver was already in your your pool, then it'll probably still stay in your pool. If it wasn't, it, it won't. Stone of Foul. Uh, this is an item that really never has much place in Duel, unfortunately. Uh, and it'll stay that way. Anytime you'd be dealt more than 20% max health by a single magical ability, that damage is instead reduced by 10%. The effect has no cooldown. It's cool, but I think this is the item that, uh, um, that has defense of both kinds right then it kind of just benefits a uh, multiplayer game mode much more than the 1v1 so that's cool though because um, it makes it a really nice uh, you know anti-mage item which apparently we need more and more and more of it's always I guess I thought you know it seems like the uh, the magical defense items are already so strong all the time but all right, new passive for Oni Hunter's Guard. For each enemy god within 55 units of you, you gain a stack of 2% damage mitigation. This cap stacks at three stacks. Okay, so again, this item's not going to be relevant at all for duel, but this sounds cool um, when you're, you know, a big uh, warrior-like god that's going to be going into the front lines and taking on a lot of the enemy team. You're going to be getting a lot of, uh, you're going to get, what, 6% damage mitigation, which is pretty nice. So that sounds pretty appealing for that item. Oh, okay. Stone of Foul, I have been corrected, is pure magic defense. I was confusing it with um, this other fucking Celtic item that they put in at the same time. Anyway, it, so yeah. Okay. And it definitely could be um, an option. Uh, anytime you be dealt more than 20% of your max health, that damage is said reduced to 10. Uh, could be really good against gods that are, are poking you with magic like uh, Hebo, like uh, pretty much you know any any prevalent mage. That's pretty nice because I mean, usually the thing in duel is like you're not getting chunked, and this doesn't rely on you being chunked. This relies on you getting hit by 20% of your max health, and that's you know that's nothing compared to what most mages like Hebo can do from afar. So this is actually an anti-poke item and could fit really nicely into duel. Could be really cool. I'll be, yeah, I was thinking of Stone of Binding. Yeah, this could be a very interesting item, and I apologize for the complete uh, fuck-up there. <laughs> yeah, definitely keep your eyes on this item and, uh, and look out for it, because I, I would definitely like to try that out. All right, so Achilles, what did they do to this man? They decreased the damage to targets in the outer cone from 80% to 70%. That's good. 
I'm, I'm down with that. That's on his shield of Achilles, his big clear move. Um, then combat dodge, they decrease damage from 65 to 55 at base rank, and it scales up to 215 instead of 225. So a little nerf to Achilles. Um, he's still pretty crazy, but um, I don't know. I guess he kind of he seemed more crazy when he first came out, and I think he, he slowly got a little bit more into place. These nerfs are, I'm sure, very justified, but at the same time, I think um, maybe, hopefully, they're, they're all he'll need. Aphrodite buff, I haven't seen this in a long time. Decreased cooldown of this ability if you hit an ally from three seconds to one second. Oh, that's awesome because really she should be able to navigate that kiss much more easily. It's so such a core part of her gameplay and you know, kissing the wrong ally or just somebody intercepts your kiss and then you can't go kiss the other guy for another three seconds is such uh, an inconvenience that, you know, didn't really need to be there. So that's a, that's a good plan. I like that. Now, Guan Yu, they actually made a nice change to Guan, uh, which will help him out a lot in duel. The third hit of Guan Yu's hit chain now cleaves. So he's got a cleave on his uh, on his third hit of his chain. So it helps him out against gods that stop him from being able to clear with his three. The last hit of Guan Yu's hit chain uh, range has also been increased from 12 to 16. So he'll be able to fire that off from a little bit further away to try to hit you know the full wave with it. And the first two hit of Guan Yu's hit chain have remained unchanged. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure, I guess. Painless stacks now only reset when out of combat rather than being consumed by a single ability. Oh, okay, cool. I'm trying to make sure I have that understood completely. Stacks now only reset when out of combat rather than being consumed by a single ability. It's like, I have to remember what the fuck Painless did in the first place. You'll be able to make sure it actually like goes onto your heel more, which is good. I bet you this is a lot more significant than I'm originally taking it as. But it boosts all of his abilities in the end game, which is great. Or you know, in the long run, this is this is this is a good change. I am just struggling with it. He heals twice as much. He has three shreds prots and two boosted slow stacks. I only reset when out of combat rather than. <gasps> I see, so he keeps his stacks throughout the fight. He only loses them when he gets out of the fight. That's fantastic. Sorry, guys. I'm going along with this at the same time as you because I have had no time at all for preparation for this one. I just Somebody asked for it. I was like, you know what? I'll just put this up here, and I'll, and I'll do it. I'll go along with you guys and learn with you. But I didn't realize some of the things would be you know, a little bit out of my scope without Hyros' extra explanation. But yeah, so that's actually huge. Wow, that's really big. That's, that's huge, huge. So now he won't be using his stacks up during the battle. Only when he's out of combat will it reset them. So he can use multiple stacks throughout the fight through all of his abilities. Holy crap. Good stuff for Guan. Uh, still not going to be great in duel, but, you know, uh, massive buff. Kepri having a hard time. They're finally looking for uh, some Kepri buffs. Increased root duration uh, from 1.3 to 1.5 at base, going up to 1.9. Uh, instead of 1.7 increased damage from 50 to 60 all the way up to two point, uh, 280 so it actually nice little bit of scaling increase on solar flare there that's pretty cool give them a little bit more uh clear give them a little bit more damage and uh yeah just overall good good stuff for kepri like i said you know not that big a change for duel because kepri cool but increased damage reduction per stack from one percent to 1.5 percent for water bowl that's a nice little thing. As a result, maximum damage reduction increased from 10% to to 15. Yeah, so extra 5% on his overall uh, damage reduction is great. And then shell spikes decreased damage reflected from 20 to 10. Oh wow, that's such a that's rough. I feel like that's decreased mana cost. However, to 50 at all ranks, his ability now decreases the cooldown of Sumo Slam as well as Nene Kappa by the same amount. Okay, so. They fucked him on the damage reflect by a good little bit there, but they ended up making it reduce sumo slam as well as the Nene Kappa. So that's pretty cool. Hopefully that works out well. It's an interesting decision. I'm not entirely sure, you know, they, they explain it all here, but they didn't want him to re rely entirely on being a reflect based god, I guess, which is, you know, which is cool. That is a pretty cheesy mechanic to rely on. A lot of changes here. Nemesis. 
Slice and Dice. Decreased damage from 50 to 40 starts, so her clear is even worse now. Gonna make Nem even rougher to play in the early stages of Duel, and it scales up to uh, 10 less throughout, it looks like. Terra, they all right, they probably nerfed the shit out of Terra because I heard they overbuffed the crap out of her. Decrease amount of hits it takes to destroy Monolith from 5 to 3, which is great because I don't know why the fuck it takes 5 hits to kill that thing. When I first heard that, I thought they, they were joking. Decrease damage mitigation from 10% to 5% on her ult now. And they decrease damage amplification from 10 to 5 as well. So huge nerfs here to Terra, which is great because they... They went too far. Now it's time for what we've all been waiting for. Thor gets a huge buff here for Mjolnir. His one increase the amount of damage the return handler deals to minions from 50% to 80%. So it's an extra 30% he gets on his clear. And boom, huge. He's going to be clearing like a maniac. He already has really solid clear overall. Uh, two points in your one, one point in your three. You're going to clear excellently at level three. And, um, Start off strong in duel. My boy. The rise. He deserves it. Uh, the mana, they decrease the mana cost from the clear of the path, uh, which to 70 at all ranks, which is nice because, you know, I was actually just playing mana. I was like, oh my god, this guy is so intensive on mana cost. And it's absolutely what they said. Very high mana cost is what he suffers from most. Uh, he's known for that. Everybody makes fun of the fact his name is Vamana, and he, you know. Uh, suffers from mana cost so hard they so they just decrease the uh, the mana cost on all of his abilities uh, other than his ultimate which is great seems perfect and it's interesting that they made uh clear the path the um the one that ends up being 70 at all ranks that being the escape and not um yeah i guess they didn't want him to be able to just spam too easily with the other ones by making them stay at 70 at all ranks because when you think about it clear the path you know, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage if you're using it too often anyway. So, you know, you, it's its own penalty. But yeah, that's that's really cool. He'll be able to um, navigate the fights a lot better and not, you know, oom um himself as easily. Shibwanke relied on getting kills to activate his passive. Oh, what did they do? That's cool. So they're trying to change up Shibwanke's passive. His ability now stacks off of player damage dealt instead of kills. Huge change. For the man himself, that's just the entirety of Shibanke is now changed. Every 1,000 damage dealt by Shibanke will provide him with one stack. That's great because the last hitting is such a, a silly thing to have to rely on, you know, especially in a team game when you're relying on playing as a unit. And this is a huge change for Duel, absolutely massive change for Duel. It makes him so much better because obviously, you know, you weren't getting that many kills in Duel in the first place. Generally, in the average game, you probably get like three to four. And, you know, you're not able to get the full benefit of that. So now you get that off of just your damage and a lot of stalemate games between ADCs as well. So cool stuff for Shimonki. He's still not going to be great in duel by any means. He'll still be one of the worst hunters. But this is very big for him. Decreased mana cost as well on Rising Jaguar from 60 to 60. We did it. Nah, but it uh, as it goes up, it's down to 80. Nice changes overall. Really good patch. Seems like most people are very happy with it uh, for good reason. Looks really strong. Skin's nothing too, uh, too crazy to brag about, but this Fender looks great. Uh, the United Cullens, good, solid. Fat Loki, you know, you hate it, you love it. And then just a question mark over the Northern Ranger, but still cool. So Chernabog, Kernabog, we'll see how he turns out. We now we just gotta, you know, play test him and see how broken that ult is. Awesome. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Alright, cool, we did it.